So today we'll be talking about these interesting mechanisms of forming an acid amide from a carboxylic acid and its derivatives. We'll also talk about the various whys and hows of what's happening and what's not happening. We'll take up a carboxylic acid RCOOH. We have taken a general formula and its various derivatives, acid chloride, ester and anhydride respectively. We'll be treating them with a given reagent and we'll be seeing how they form acidamide. Also, we've already studied in the previous videos how NH2- can easily replace the leaving groups OH- Cl- OR- and OCOR from the substrate to give amide. And if we are working in a lab, there is a possibility that we'd get NaNH2 or KNH2 to react with the given substrate. But are we sure that we'll get that? Usually what happens is when we do organic reactions, they give us organic reagents. If they're giving us a carboxylic acid, they might just give us ammonia for it. And they tell us that, okay, now go and make an amide out of it. How do we do that? Let's talk about that. So we have a test tube and we put carboxylic acid RCOOH and ammonia to it. What can happen? Pause the video and think. You might be thinking, why should I pause the video? This is what you are studying, right? It should form an amide. It doesn't. What really happens is we have an acid and we have a base. There's an acid base neutralization reaction that's going to happen and we'll get a salt. Whoops. That's not what we expected. How do I get an amide out of it? To get an amide, I have to have to remove H2O so that I get RCO and H2, right? This has to go. So it has to dehydrate. It has to remove a water molecule to give me my required amide. And that can happen when we heat this test tube. Once we heat this test tube, we get the required amide and the water goes out. So if I want to get an amide out of a carboxylic acid and ammonia mixture, I have to heat it. If I don't heat it, the reaction will stop at the formation of salt. Let's just try for acid chloride and see what happens. There's no acid base reaction happening here. So why don't you pause the video and try the mechanism yourself before we do it together. Ammonia being the attacking nucleophile here attacks the carbonyl carbon. These pi electrons move to the more electronegative oxygen atom and we get something like this. Nitrogen was neutral but since it formed another bond, we get a positive charge here. What we really want is this chloride to leave. But if it does, we'll get something that looks like this. I don't think this is stable, do you? There's a positive charge on nitrogen. So what really happens is, while leaving, this chloride ion tends to take a proton from this nitrogen so that we eventually get the required amide and HCl. Hey, it's time to look carefully at the side product. It's an acid. Whatever we took initially is a base as well. So, so, if I take 10 molecules of RCOCl, let's say, and 10 molecules of ammonia, one molecule of RCOCl will react with one molecule of ammonia to give one molecule of amide and one molecule of HCl. As soon as HCl is formed, it will go out looking for the second molecule of ammonia. And that's gone for us. That ammonia molecule will react with HCl to give NH4Cl, that's a salt. It cannot act as a nucleophile anymore. And that ammonia molecule is gone. I took 10 of each. Oh God, now I'm just left with 8. What do I do? And if I react the other one, it will form HCl again and that HCl will go for ammonia again. So my ammonia will get exhausted faster. So what do I do? I'll have to take excess of ammonia. And why do I need to take it? Because the side product is forcing me to. The side product tells me if you don't take excess of ammonia, your reaction is not going to be completed well. 
exactly that's why so rcocl reacts with excess of ammonia to give rconh2 plus hcl now that i have it in excess let's say in the ratio of 1 is to 2 i'm very safe that okay i've taken twice the amount of ammonia hcl go and react and if somebody tells me that no no don't waste chemicals no don't take too much of ammonia how do you know you have taken twice what if there's an excess of ammonia that's left unreacted don't do this find another way do we or do we not have another way hold that thought keep it written somewhere and we will come back to it but before that let's just talk about how an acid chloride would respond to the various amines instead of ammonia this is what we already know this gives rco nh2 and hcl look carefully what has happened what has left the cl and 1h so if any amine has this 1h to give to the chloride ion the reaction can take place normally and that's exactly what happens i'll take a 1 degree amine and i can see okay it also has an h so the reaction can take place please pause the video and try and write the products yourself so the products look something like this what about a 2 degree amine oh it also has an h try yourself for the 3 degree amine and then we'll do it together i can see there's no h so if it attacks also i'll get this intermediate but the cl minus will not leave because it cannot take an h plus and the product will have a positive charge on the nitrogen atom and that's not what we need so this reaction typically goes backwards which tells me that okay 3 degree amines do not form an amide when reacted with an acid chloride or we can say acid chlorides don't respond to 3 degree amines but are 3 degree amines bases yes they are and if they are bases can they help me somewhere else yes they can this brings me back to this one so if i don't want to take excess of ammonia what do i do i take another base another base that takes up hcl and helps me continue this reaction without wasting any it this base could be pyridine they usually use pyridine in these organic reactions or it could be a 3 degree amine why because 3 degree amines do not give nucleophilic substitution reactions with acid halides that's why so when i treat an acid chloride with ammonia or 1 degree or 2 degree amines i'll get the corresponding amides and hcl would be my side product if and if i don't want to take excess of these nitrogen compounds what do i do i use a base which could be a pyridine or a 3 degree amine because i know they'll not hinder the reaction or they'll not cause an issue to the reaction it's time to talk about the next derivative which is an anhydride please pause the video and try the mechanism yourself first when these lone pair on the nitrogen atom attack the carbonyl carbon these pi electrons move to the more electronegative oxygen atom we get something that looks like this nitrogen has a positive charge so if this leaving group wants to leave it has to take h plus from nitrogen to make sure we get an amide and one sec what's the side product it's an acid it's the same story as an acid chloride when the side product is an acid you either have to take excess of ammonia or or we can take a base that helps us do the reaction properly the last acid derivative again please pause and try it yourself the lone pair on the nitrogen atom attack the carbonyl carbon the pi electron density moves to the oxygen atom and things leave would it leave yes would it take up the h yes oh it's all similar for everybody and we get an amide and an alcohol is alcohol in general an acid no so do we need excess ammonia not really do we need another base no nothing special okay that was a lot to take in right let's just quickly revise and see what all we have learned in this video we took up a carboxylic acid and ammonia ester and ammonia 
an acid chloride or an anhydride with ammonia that had similar things to do so what really happened when acid was treated with ammonia it was an acid base reaction and if i wanted an amide out of it i had to heat it did we learn anything special in ester of course we learned how to do the mechanism right that was special in itself but still we got an amide and alcohol as the side product what about anhydride and acetaldehyde in case of an anhydride there was a carboxylic acid as the side product so what did we do to make sure that this didn't bother the reaction too much we either took ammonia in excess or we added a base to it similarly in order to make sure hcl didn't bother the reactants too much we either took ammonia in excess or we added bases like pyridine or 3 degree amines 